So Raymond, hello to you. Uh, I understand you have your invention with you. Can you uh, raise it up, show it to us and uh, tell us about it? Yeah, absolutely. So here I have my invention. It's uh, what I call a global inlet director. And basically what you're able to do with this is you can take this and install it into one of those main cabin inlets typically found in a commercial aircraft. And what this will actually do is that it's actually able to redirect the airflow so that instead of having these large turbulent swirls of air that promote uh, and propagate diseases everywhere, we're able to provide individual personalized breathing zones for every single passenger on the plane so that people can get from point A to point B, uh, breathing 55 times less pathogens and up to, and, uh, up to getting up to 190% more fresh air. And I understand that some people have called your invention a filter, but you bristle at that description because it's inaccurate. Yes. Um, so generally what's going on in the airline industry is that there's been tons of money spent into designing filters. And the biggest problem is not actually the filter. It's actually what happens in between the time that air comes in through the main inlets and, uh, and before they have a chance to be eliminated by the filter. What typically happens in the conventional cabin is that sometimes when air comes in to, for example, an aisle seated passenger, he actually breathes out contaminated air that gets pushed directly back in to uh, the mouths of, say, a uh, window seated passenger, all without that air effectively being able to get out through a filter. And so what this is able to do is that it's able to create these uh, virtual breathing zones um, by uh, basically eliminating any cross-sectional or longitudinal transmission of disease so that no matter where you're seated, if a passenger next to you sneezes, you're protected. You know, I, I, I love this. I love that you're so smart, but how did you come up with this idea? It seems ingenious. Well, actually, uh, I was getting quite concerned recently um, back in December with the Ebola outbreak, and that actually got me looking into disease epidemics. And although Ebola is spread more through uh, large droplet routes. Um, other epidemics such as um, H1N1 uh, diseases can actually um, spread very directly and with uh, very high um, risks. For example, the CDC has actually found that an H1N1 passenger walking onto a plane can actually infect up to 17 other passengers per flight. And so when I started looking into the research that's been done with cabin airflow in general, um, there's actually been very low resolution simulations um, that because of the way that the physics are modeled and the way that they are over approximating, researchers are over approximating geometry, we're actually not getting a full understanding of the picture. And so what I decided to do was to utilize some computational and physical tests and to better study what we have with the traditional cabin and to use those insights into actually being able to develop an innovation like this to be able to effectively curb disease uh, worldwide to prevent or to be able to curb down the uh, next possible outbreak of disease. So any interest from any airline so far? <laughs> well, um, I have uh, pat made this invention patent pending, so I've applied for a provisional patent. And what's actually uh, going on for the next two months is that I'm thinking of uh, going and approaching both air aircraft manufacturers as well as airlines to be able to implement this as fast as possible. And with many of the judges that I've gotten at the International Science Fair, uh, several of them are actually from Boeing and they've shown a lot of interest um, in terms of this innovation. And I'm hoping to kind of step it up over the, next, over the following months and to really get that implemented. Okay, we're running out of time, but I wanna ask you two very quick questions. The first one, $75,000. You're 17 years old, you won $75,000. What are you gonna do with that? Well, um, as part of the $17, I'm hoping to be able to invest some of that into furthering my research so uh, furthering my computational calculations um, and as well as to be able to use that fund in terms of pushing this to the market. Um, obviously, there's some certifications process and um, et cetera in terms of pushing this, taking it from a prototype to a real, uh, a, a real innovation that can be installed in planes. And I'm hoping to use that to fund that as well as possibly to further my education um, in university in a, a couple of years time. So where do you want to go? Uh, well, I am hoping to uh, go to university in either Canada or, uh, or the U.S. And I'm really hoping to be able to study engineering and business uh, because it's one thing to have all these great ideas, but it's another thing to be able to leverage business practices in order to actually get them implemented and to be able to effectively communicate them uh, into the real world.
Okay, Raymond, two words for you, Dragon's Den. Think about it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks.